Thank you all for joining the Resine Colour Confidence webinar. It's great to have you here. Colour is a crucial element in enhancing and complementing architectural designs. Colour selection can be overwhelming for both clients and professionals, making it challenging to know where to begin. Whether you're creating bespoke colour schemes or selecting the perfect shade of white, which we have thousands of, or seeking inspiration to elevate your projects, this webinar should add value for you. In my 12 years of experience providing colour advice, the clients who show the most pride in the end product of a new build or renovation are those who put extra thought into their colour schemes, thereby providing colour decisions which reflect a person's taste and personality. Providing detailed colour advice tailored to individuals results in the clients feeling more connected to the space that they're living in. Our custom-made colour advice provides clients with a home where they can feel serene in their own spaces. Especially with world events over the past few years and current economic conditions, it is more important than ever to provide our clients with a home where they feel relaxed and content. Towards the end, we'll have time for a Q&A session, so please feel free to ask any questions as we progress. Firstly, you want to determine what colours your clients relate to and establish their goals. A client's particular lifestyle can flow through into their colour selection. For example, those who live by the beach may gravitate towards tranquil, soft colours, or those who enjoy the hustle and bustle of city life may want to explore, explore more bold and vibrant looks. Colour relates to personal tastes and it is a fantastic way to bring their character into the home. Using a favourite painting, wallpaper, curtain, fabric, or it can be simply a cushion as the starting point for a scheme is a great way to pull colours. You can already see that the colours work well together, so draw them out of the art, wallpaper, fabric, and use them on your walls and trims. Take note of the proportions that the colours are used in and mimic that into your colour scheme. Inspiration is also a key component into getting your client to start thinking about the scheme and the feel that they want to create throughout their home. Some of my favourites to get them started are simply by looking through magazines. Resine has Habitat by Resine. It might be a piece of artwork that they already have or perhaps they've found for their new home. Fabrics, nature, fashion. So often I find that if a client is wearing a pop of colour or a subtle hint of colour, they might actually feel comfortable bringing that colour through into their interiors. So it's always worth checking with them what, what do they like to wear, um, what do they already have in their wardrobe that they may feel comfortable bringing into the home. Now, if your customer does have a piece of artwork or an image that they found online and they absolutely love the colours, that are already in that scheme. Resine has a fantastic tool online called the Resine Color Palette Generator. So you can upload your image and then it'll shoot you out your own custom palette, which is pretty cool. So it already gives you a really good starting point. Even if those colors are, are not exactly right, it still gives you that starting point and then you can either go lighter or darker depending on what's going to work best for your client. Wallpaper is another great tool to use as inspiration and a starting point. So it already gives you a beautiful color palette to get going. You may only choose to use the base color or simply one of the accent colors, but you're guaranteed that that color is going to flow through really nicely into the home. And Resine has hundreds of wallpaper books to get your clients feeling inspired. So we encourage them to come in and have a good look through the books. They can also do this online, but there's nothing quite like coming into the store and touching the textures and, and seeing the colours 
in person. Now, if you're working with an existing home, your client may have started to build their inspiration and thinking about what colors they want to use. And they might present to you some images that show really glossy, new, beautiful kitchens and, and you know things like that. And possibly they're working with more of a character home and those elements are just not going to fit well in their home. So we always encourage your customers to start looking at things that are already in the home, those existing elements such as the kitchen joinery, the curtains, flooring and furniture. And this is going to give them their base, their starting point to building that colour palette. I usually like to look at the kitchen joinery and the flooring if it is staying and use my fan deck. Chances are you'll be using the whites and neutrals fan deck and just matching up and trying to get an idea of the tone that's already there. And then you can start building your colours off that. For a new home, you have a lot more options available to you. What I would recommend is starting with the more permanent fixtures first. So thinking of your flooring, kitchen cabinetry, fabrics, getting those elements locked in, but also getting your client to start thinking about colours quite early on. We see this quite often where the paint colours are left right to the end because I know there's so many other things that they are thinking about and they have to make decisions on. But it is really important and I encourage them to start looking at colours early on just so when it gets down to those final, final months that they're not rushed into a colour scheme that they're not completely happy with. A lot of the time we'll see customers come in on a time limit and they're rushed and they say, let's just do white all through the house, even though they possibly wanted to actually have some colour in there. So it's just really important, allow time so that they can feel like they have achieved something that they're proud of. There's a strong connection between the shades and our moods and emotions. For instance, there's a huge difference between emotions evoked by cool and warm tones. Bright, warm colours, reds, oranges, yellows, tend to stimulate energy and happiness. While cool, subdued colours, blues, greens, purples, are soothing and calm. Bright, warm colours are best in rooms for entertaining like dining rooms or kitchens. While cool colours work best in relaxing spaces like bedrooms or even bathrooms. I tend to select colour according to their use for the spaces. For example, a child's playroom can be very colourful as opposed to a bedroom that has soft tones and a calming effect. So it's always important to ask your customer those questions. What will this space be used for? How do you intend to use it on a day-to-day -day basis? That way you have a true understanding on the depth of colour that they want to go for, how wild they want to go in there, or does it need to be more neutral in that space? Now we're going to have a look at yellow and orange and the emotions related to those. While bright electric yellows can inspire energy and passion, soft buttery shades and light zesty hues are closely related to feelings of happiness, optimism and confidence. A tonal scheme of yellow can work quite well for those who want to have a touch of colour but still want to keep a somewhat neutral space. Selecting your main shade of yellow and playing around with the intensity works really well. And this method can be used with any colour, not just yellow. So you can see in this image here of this lovely dining room where they have used various shades of yellow um, and just keeping with that really beautiful tonal look, it does actually make the walls feel quite neutral. And then you can play around with the intensity. So you've got that more brighter hue on the stool there and the chairs for a little bit of fun. But you can see if you took those bright elements away and kept it more neutral, pulled in some soft whites and some earthy shades, you'd have yourself a really soothing, relaxing space. So yellow can work for those who prefer more of a soothing look or 
those who want that more energetic vibe. Orange is a warm, passionate and fun color. The brighter shades are cheerful and tend to stimulate appetite, making them ideal for kitchens and dining rooms. Tip here for orange, tend to avoid orange in hot sunny rooms as it can make the room, make a sunny room seem unbearably warm. So just keep that in mind. And it doesn't have to be limited to just the walls. As you can see here, we've got that really fun check pattern on the flooring broken up with the white. So an otherwise really intense color feel, can feel quite neutral at the same time. And it is not just a color for interior. As you can see by this image down below uh, that is by Fabric Architecture, they've used yellow in a really clever way and just got that small pop on those features on the exterior. Red. Now this fiery hue has more opposing emotional associations than any other color. Red is linked to passion and love as well as power and anger. Add more black to red and it becomes sophisticated and mellow. Add white and of course it becomes pink. For interiors, red is often being used as a feature wall, a backdrop of strong color at one end of a room. It's a good solution for those who find red too overpowering powering on their walls. Red is traditionally used in areas where food is eaten. It stimulates appetite, so restaurants love it, as we know. And at home, we can do the same in our dining rooms. So you can see this beautiful dining room here. It's got that really intense color and it can handle it because it's not a space that you're in all day long. So those areas that you don't spend a lot of time in, that is where it can be really fun to introduce a bold, intense color if you wish and again another image by fabric architecture showing the exterior here with just a pop of color around the windows and at the entrance there subtle use of pink can bring warmth and rosiness into a room it soothes rather than stimulates in fact, research shows it can reduce anger, hence why it's used in prisons. This color has come out of the little girl's bedroom and into more grown up areas of the house. It has been used in living rooms, kitchens, dining rooms, anywhere really. And you can see pink, it's, it's not known as the hot pink, bright pink that it used to be it comes in so many different shades and these beautiful soft neutral pinks are becoming really popular and really versatile to use in the home so you can see this image here in the entrance way it just gives that beautiful soft sense of warmth this would work really well if you had a small apartment that needed brightening up and just a little bit more warmth it's a really nice soft option Purple is a color of royalty. It is opulent and often associated with mystery and spiritual awareness, vision, luxury, truth, and quality. Saturated dark purple can add a powerful punch to a room, while as a lavender tint, it's popular for little girls' bedrooms. But as you can see, not just little girls' bedrooms, we have this really interesting nook here where you've, it's actually been teamed with a beautiful rust fabric which is quite an unusual combination, but it actually works really nicely. And I think it just softens that cool tone of the lilac. Green is at the center of the color spectrum. So it represents harmony, balance, and peace. It soothes and relaxes, and is therefore also a healing and reassuring color. Olive and sage greens have a neutral, timeless character, so are popular for office colors. We seem to be comfortable living with green, I think due to its dominance in the natural environment, making it an easy color to use anywhere, indoors and outdoors. Lighter hues are great for living rooms and bathrooms to promote a relaxing environment 
while mid greens give a clean accent to kitchens and dining areas. So you can see in this image here of the bedroom, just using that colour halfway up the walls and blending the dresser in the same colour and having that white contrast, it just gives a really beautiful fresh look to the space without overpowering it with that green, yellow green undertone there. And then for more of a bold look, we've got the green meets blue in this lovely living room space. So it just gives that beautiful sense of coziness and cocoon look and feel. Blue is often linked to trust, loyalty, intelligence, and sadness. Blue is often considered to be a clean colour, so it works well in wet areas like bathrooms and laundries, but certain shades of blue can relax, soothe, and make us feel calm, opening it up to be widely used throughout the home. Now, the over the recent years, Resine Duck Egg Blue has become a really popular colour, and for a good reason. It is really easy to live with. It's a lovely, soft blue. It can be used pretty much anywhere through the home, but does seem to work really well in, again, bathrooms and bedrooms. It does have a little bit more of a grey undertone, and I think that's why it's been such a popular colour, because it almost acts as a neutral, and it really does go with anything. But if you are wanting something with a bit more colour to it, looking at something like Resine Frozen that's been used in this bedroom with a little study nook, it's known for focus, so it's a perfect colour for that sort of combination. Or if you're wanting something a little bit more intense, something like Resine Madison works really well as a colour in a bedroom, or you could use that in an office space also. Black can be timeless and glamorous. It is also the colour of emotional safety, efficiency, substance and excellence. Psychologically, black creates protective barriers as it totally absorbs all the other colours of the spectrum. Combine it with white and bright colours for a modern look or use black furniture in a neutral coloured room for elegance. And as you can see here, it works really well as a feature wall behind a TV. If you want to make that TV disappear, it is perfect for that. And don't be afraid to break the rules. While we have all these guidelines and, and tips and things to get us started with a colour scheme, by far the best colour schemes that I've ever seen are those where people inject their own personality and creativity into the space. I mean, you can see down here just that clever use of dark green behind the bed in that little wee nook. I mean, how effective is that? Just having that pop of colour or if you don't want to commit to all of the walls, coming up with a fun pattern like this orange squiggle behind the bed there. Now we're going to have a look at how can colour be used to complement good architecture. We can use colour to create an illusion. It can highlight the good features of a room and camouflage defects. Different colours affect the way we see a room. So we can see here in this image, we've got the really dark ceiling with the lighter walls. Painting a ceiling out in a darker colour can work really well in a space that has a tall stud height that you might want to bring down, or a simply a space where you want it to have that really cosy cocoon feeling to it. And then, the image there with the lighter scheme. So a tip there, if you want to have a really eerie light space, or you might be working with a small area where it needs to feel a lot more open, painting the walls in a similar color to the flooring will help to achieve that. So there are lots of different tips and tricks that we can do with the use of paint colors. So you can see here another dark ceiling. So this space, all the walls white, white fabrics, lighter furniture. You can imagine if we had a white ceiling, it would be quite a different 
feel to that space. It'd be really light and airy. But in this case, just bringing in that darker color really grounds the room and brings the outdoors in. Nature conditions us to expect balance and harmony. It offers us guidelines for the use of color and provides us with some basic principles. Now, these are just guidelines. Please do not feel like you have to stick to these rules. It is just something to reference if you need. The darkest value at our feet, the medium level at eye level, and the lightest value above us. Think of color as a chameleon. It changes depending upon accent colors. It is influenced by adjacent colors. Now lighting is always a really important one in making sure that you are selecting the right colors for your client's home. So often I get customers come in and say to me, I've, I've found the color that I want. I've seen it in my friend's house. I love it. This is the color. I'm just going to go for it. And I'll stop them there and say, please take a test pot or an A4 sample home before you purchase the paint and make sure that it is going to work well in your home. And often they'll take that color home, try it in their lighting with their surroundings, and it just doesn't work. It, it doesn't work in their home. And that's because of the lighting. That can be because of their furniture colors. It, it can be completely different from room to room as well. So it's really important in just making sure that they do test that color out in their home before committing to it. As a general rule of thumb, warm light, pink, red, yellow, can accentuate warm colors, while cold light, blues, greens, white, and gray, enhances cold, colder tones. On exterior, paint colors will lighten up. So if you're in doubt, I would always recommend to go one shade darker. For the interior, color will usually intensify. So I would recommend going one shade lighter. The whites and neutrals are fantastic for offering different strengths of the same color. So if you think you found a color, but it's not quite right, have a look at the other strengths that are available. And if that one color doesn't work throughout the whole home, that is where the whites and neutrals come in really handy as well. So you might go for a deeper shade in the lighter, larger areas of the house. And then the smaller, darker spaces, you may want to go for a lighter look in that same color. And that just keeps the neutral space looking really interesting as well. So what to do if you have critical light areas? If your walls are not in perfect condition, when I say perfect, well, if they were not able to be a, at least a level five finish, then Resin does have great products that can help you build that surface up to a, le a level five. And we definitely recommend at least a level five finish for darker colors as they tend to highlight imperfections a lot more. Textured wallpaper is also a really great tool to put on walls if they do have minor surface imperfections. And I stress minor, not major. Wallpaper will not cover that completely out, but it definitely will help um, draw your eye away from that. Textured paint finishes are also a fantastic look to help disguise any surface imperfections. The Resin Paint FX is a really fun, fun way of introducing something a little bit more bespoke into the home. And we will look at that uh, a few more slides across. The gloss level will also affect how your color looks. Matte surfaces tend to absorb light and will appear darker and deeper than glossy reflective surfaces. Light colors and glossy finishes will make a room appear larger. So that can work really well in small bathrooms, little apartment bathrooms. If you're painting it all white, you could opt for a semi-gloss finish and that's just going to help open up that space a little bit. Well, darker colors, heavier textures, and matte finishes will make the room seem cozier. 
so this image here you can see in that deep sort of red burgundy tone that it has a low sheen on its walls and that just creates that overall cozy warmth that we want in a, a media or a second living room where it's designed basically just to be watching TV in the evenings rather than during the day. Change of surfaces and surroundings can make the same colour look completely different. So you could paint white onto a texture such as stucco and it won't look the same as white on a lacquered kitchen. The higher the gloss level on a surface and the smoother the surface is, the more reflective it's going to be. The more it's going to change with surrounding colours. A flat white colour on a stucco wall will appear heavy and won't reflect anything. On a smooth surface, and if we use a high gloss, it's going to reach out into the room and grab those surrounding colours. So an example here, we have this exterior, which has been done in resin sea fog on both the weatherboards and the plaster. And in certain, at certain times of the day and under certain lighting, it does look like two different colours. So you can see the front of the house there, the weatherboards versus the plaster, looks completely different in my opinion. And that simply comes down to the different textures. So you've got plaster, which is just as quite a smooth, flat finish there. And then you've got the weatherboards, which, which offer shadowing. And shadowing of the weatherboards can make that colour look deeper, like we're seeing here. So especially with exterior, paint choices. I'd always recommend, if possible, try your colour onto the surface that is actually intended on being painted. Especially weatherboards, because you do get that shadowing, I always say paint up a big sample on there so you can see that effect. Colours that have more depth will hold their own. Hues of red, blue, green or yellow, your basic primary and secondary colours will hold their own because they're not going to be influenced dramatically by what's around them because they have that intensity in them already. Colours that have a high content of white are easily affected by what's around it because light colours are more responsive to what's around them. So quite often if you've got this beautiful white space and lots of windows and you know there's a lot happening outside, you've got green, you might have pool that's offering that reflection into the house and that is just going to bounce around and have a party on your walls. Um, so it's always good just to consider those elements as well. Perhaps you need something that's a little bit deeper on the walls if you don't want to have all of that reflectiveness. And now we're going to have a look at some tips on how colour and paint can be used to hide surfaces that you don't necessarily want to stand out as a feature. Oh. Darker colours can be really effective as a backdrop when you do want to sort of camouflage things a little bit more. So you can see here we've got the fireplace there and just doing a darker colour in behind. It just makes that sort of recede into the wall and, and disappear. And then you've got this kitchen down below and thought this was quite clever. They've carried that darker colour on to their walls just to make that whole kitchen space feel a little bit longer. Painting PVC downpipe. So we get asked this all the time. Can I paint my downpipes? Do I have to replace them fully to get a colour that now matches my new exterior colour scheme? The answer is yes, you can paint your PVC downpipes and it is a relatively easy procedure to paint directly onto the PVC downpipes and it just makes such a difference on an exterior. As you can see here, we've got this dark brick with a light downpipe and it just screams at you, it just pops out and it's not something that you want to be a feature. Where well, you can see the image down below having that darker exterior and the darker downpipes, you don't even look at them, it just disappears. So all of those little features, it is definitely worth doing the research and figuring out if you can paint those elements, because chances are you can, and it's not just PVC downpipes. 
If you want to make a fence disappear and the planting pop, use a darker colour. And this can also help disguise cracking in timber fencing. So if you've got a really old fence and you're thinking, oh, do I need to rip this down and you know tell the client to start again? Possibly not, if it's not in terrible condition and it's still holding up, you know, and it's 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 still there, not falling over at all. Um, then a darker colour can work really well just to help disguise those imperfections. So you can see in this image here, we've got one fence in a darker colour, that's resine pitch black, and then you've got that lighter colour along the back there, resine nutmeg. So you can see by having that darker colour, it just disappears and, and pushes it back a little bit more, whereas that lighter colour does seem to come forward a bit more. So just thinking about the space, what do you want it to do? And if you are looking for a really nice striking backdrop, if you've got lots of greenery, black is always a really good go-to for that. Now, I know the use of darker colours is becoming more and more popular for exteriors. And so we want to protect that darker colour and make it last as long as we can. And Resine has a fantastic technology, Resine Cool Colours. When, so when choosing colours for the exterior of the house and to a certain extent the interior, the light reflectance value, the LRV, of each colour is an important consideration, especially when choosing your darker colours. Dark colours absorb more light and depending on what they're put onto, it can create a problem for the material later on. For example, timber weatherboards can warp through the heat that is built up on the surface. It pays to check with what the rating is for that particular material that you're using prior to the colour selection. And that will just save a heap of time for your client and yourself to make sure that you know what that LRV is on, on the substrate to guarantee that they will still get their warranty on the product. Resine Cool Colour Technology makes painting exterior surfaces in dark colours both easier and safer. It can be used on all sorts of exterior materials and applications from weatherboards and concrete to window sills. A Resine Cool Colour looks like a normal colour, but thanks to special pigment technology, it reflects more heat. So it doesn't get as hot as a standard colour would. This exterior up the top here, this home is by James Hardy and it features our popular resin element on the exterior. And using a resin cool colour means that this home's exterior will stay protected and looking fresher for years to come. This patio area features resin waterborne woodsman cool colour in pitch black. And the cement wall and patio roof framing are painted in resin, cool colour, all black. Now, selecting the right white for your client. I personally find white to be one of the hardest colours to make a decision on, probably because we have thousands of them. Um, and it is one of those colours that does pick up on other surrounding colours really easily. So I think that's also what makes it so tricky because you think you found the perfect white and then you know suddenly you've got that colour up on the wall and you're looking at it in the afternoon and then you're seeing all these different tones throwing themselves onto the whites which can completely put you off. So we're going to have a look at some of the different options of whites that we have and finding the right white for your client. So first up, we have warm whites. So warm or yellow whites can range from buttery creams to subtle fleecy whites. There are many whites and neutrals in the collection that are sophisticated and almost aged whites, which can be used to warm a room without being overly yellow. These are particularly good for south facing rooms or those with lots of reflected greens from trees or plants. Generally they work best for older homes with more character details and trim. Colours to try for that, resin orchid white, 
Rosine Half Pearl Luster, Rosine Bianca, and Rosine Villa White. Cool whites tend to suit more contemporary interiors with lots of windows rather than older homes with smaller windows. And it seems that we still love a grey edged white. And we continue to see interiors painted in variations of resin alabaster and black white. And the beauty of these two colours is that they are soft whites, so they're easy to live with, also hugely versatile and complement most other colours well. Using grey or stark whites doesn't mean like you have to feel like you're living in a chilli bin. There are many ways to soften these whites with textures, furnishings and coloured accessories. Some examples there, resin black white, resin alabaster, resin merino and resin sea fog. Crisp and earthy, so looking more into the in-between whites, as I like to call them, with a slight green undertone. Green edge whites tend to change with the light quality, appearing warm one minute and cool the next. Because green is made up of blue, traditionally a cool colour, and yellow are warm. Green based whites have the ability to morph with a mood. They tend to suit garden based or green outlooks and, or, and they do suit our bright light quality, which is great. Colours to look at there, Rosine Rice Cake, Half Thornton Cream, Rosine Carrara and Rosine Linen. And then we have the Romantic and Warm. So this is also another good colour of, which I like to sort of call the in-between colour as well. It is made up of more of a blush undertone. So generally colours that have a little bit of magenta in them. So it offers that little bit of warmth, but it's not a yellow undertone. And again, this would probably work best in more traditional homes, but can be used in modern homes in those lighter strengths. Looking at colours like Rosine Blanc, Rosine Biscotti, and Rosine Sandspit Brown. You want to ask your client, do they want the space to feel cooler, crisper, warmer, or brighter? Using a cool or warm white will give you quite a different feel. So it's important to establish that quite early on. Red, orange, yellow and brown based whites are good for rooms that need warming up, while grey, green or blue undertones are good for taking the visual heat out of north facing rooms. So if your client is wanting to go for an all white scheme, then I would definitely encourage that you explore different sheen levels to help your colour scheme from feeling too flat. So this space here they have gone with a they've actually painted the flooring in this case and they've gone with a gloss finish on the flooring a low sheen on the walls a flat on the ceiling and a semi gloss on the doors and the cabinets there and another really good way of making a white scheme feel a little bit more interesting is by using different strengths of the same color or another family so you can definitely team different whites together. So this space here they've gone for a slightly deeper shade of white on the doors and this can work really well if they have little ones or pets that may be rubbing up against those doors, just little finger marks, it will help to disguise that a little bit more as well. So just thinking of different ways to make your white space feel a little bit more interesting and of course by introducing texture and fabrics. And so if you are going for an all white colour scheme for your client, it's always important to think about how they are going to maintain those beautiful white fresh walls. And Rosine has a really fantastic product called Interior Paintwork Cleaner. And this comes in a really handy little spray bottle or you can get it as a concentrate. And this works really well for things like finger marks around light switches. And just giving your walls that they overall freshen up every now and again because it is really important to keep up with that maintenance to keep your walls feeling nice and light and bright 
quite often customers think that they need to repaint their walls if they've got sort of marks and things like that on them but chances are they will come off a lot of the time so try the interior paint work cleaner before they end up repainting or if they have new walls use that as a regular maintenance thing sheen levels is also going to help keep your walls and your doors looking fresh so definitely on the doors i wouldn't go anything lower than a semi-gloss if you go for a low sheen or a flat it can look beautiful to begin with but it can be a lot harder to keep clean so definitely those high traffic areas like your doors your skirting boards do those in a semi-gloss and then areas like your walls you can definitely opt for a low sheen finish and you can either go a low sheen or a flat on your ceiling just depending on the project really how to test your color so once you're at the stage of you've found all your beautiful colors that you want to have a look at you really really want to encourage your client to test those colors in their home on their home before they make a decision so this image here with all the lovely blues lined up is what you do not want to do this can become really confusing for your client to actually see which colors they're looking at and the different undertones and they all just end up looking like one color so you want to do some really big swatches the image below is a great example of how to test your colors for an interior so you want to paint up a really large piece of card and leave a border all the way around leaving that border just isolates the new color from the existing color and makes it a lot easier to see the difference between the two especially if you have a customer who's starting out with quite a yellow based wall and they're looking at going for more of a cooler toned white i find that having that border it does just allow that isolation between the two colors because anything that you put over top that's lighter than a yellow is going to look quite gray so at least just having that break in the color can help you see that a little bit more and if you are testing your colors on the exterior i do recommend that you paint onto the surface that is actually going to be painted if you can't do that then just paint up a big piece of card and move this around outside under different lighting for the interior if you want to see how the color may intensify once all the rooms painted take the card into a corner of a room and bend bend it into the corner and then that way you can see how the color is going to intensify onto itself once all the walls are painted now we're going to have a look into the color trends that we see coming through for 2024 perfect imperfection organic looks curves rounded shapes handmade asymmetric ceramics wrinkled and stonewashed bed linen and walls that look weathered or a textured finish so all about texture for 2024 resin paint effects is a really great product to help you achieve texture on your walls and we'll go into that couple of slides across dusky clay so pinks are definitely getting a little bit more muted leaning more into the neutral shades here with the dusky clays so resin contended and resin half tea i know can you believe it tea is still hanging in there caramel so beautiful rich warm caramel tones resin amaranth resin salted caramel you can see it pairs beautifully with natural stone textures marbles timber furnitures touch of brass terracotta resin tuscany resin soul searcher and this can be a really striking color used as a feature wall and as you can see here works beautifully with tan leathers and if you want to make that color feel a little bit more grounded introducing some depth through a touch of black works really nicely deep blue resin ocean waves resin indian ink this is a color that can work beautifully throughout the whole home in different shades you can see here in this living room they've gone with a really beautiful dark navy blue and actually taken it up over the ceiling as well to give that full dramatic look 
but pairing it with lighter colors, a pop of color, you can see how that just really brings that blue to life. Earth-toned pinks, Resine Summer Rose, Resine Savoir. So these tones are a little bit more coral, quite fun, would work really well in a little girl's bedroom or just as a pop of colour, perhaps in the office. Organic greens, Resine Rewildling, Resine Open Sesame. This sort of colouring is really beautiful for the neutral lovers who want to be a little bit more bold and have some colour throughout the home because it acts as that beautiful neutral backdrop. You can really pair it with almost anything. And you can see it works lovely with lighter fabrics against it. Sage, so we have Resine Field Day and Resine Hindsight. Sage is a beautiful soft colour that can be used throughout the whole home. If you want to have more of a neutral, sort of soft, earthy look, use different shades of soft greens and introduce some whites. Or for a bolder look, you can use some stronger, deep, more forest greens with the sage. And sage seems to be one of those colours that we are seen coming through not only on walls, but kitchen cabinetry as well. So there's lots of different ways to use the colour and thinking not just restricted to your walls. Furniture and kitchen cabinetry is also going to be quite popular. Neutral grounds. Neutrals will always have a place in colour trends. They are based of the colour scheme. They're that grounding colour that links the rooms together. We are noticing a shift with the neutrals warming up a little bit. So a touch more yellow has been added to the neutrals. But when I say yellow, don't freak out. It's not yellow, but it's just giving a little bit more warmth to the neutrals. So we've got Resine Rice Cake, Resine Nomad and Resine Quarter Iron Sand. Paint effects, resine paint effects medium and resine Santex. This is a really cool way if you are wanting to create a bespoke look for your clients and still keep the costs relatively low. So this can be used in so many different ways to achieve so many different effects. If they want a really subtle sort of concrete plaster look, I'd recommend using colours that are quite similar to one another and that'll just give you a really, really soft look. Or you can do something a little bit more bold like this image here. And this is just a mix of greys and whites. And for Resine Santex, if you do want to introduce a little bit more texture to the walls, it might be that your client is wanting to keep a really neutral palette, but again, just bringing that texture into the walls can be a really nice touch and that's Resine Santex. And this is example, another example of Resine Paint Effects used to create more of a lime wash effect. This is very subtle, perfect for those who are wanting a neutral look, but just adding that touch of something. Again, Resine Lime Wash Walls and the colours here are Resine Field Day and Resine Kinship. And it just offers that beautiful soft look to your walls. And the resine paint effects can be used in any resine paint colour, so it's completely customisable depending on your customer's colour palette. Colour is a powerful tool that can greatly impact the overall look and feel of a space. If you are feeling unsure about your colour choices, we are here to offer our expertise and assistance. By understanding the principles of colour, we can help you create a colour scheme that your client will enjoy being around. So please don't hesitate to reach out for a second opinion or guidance on selecting the perfect colours for your project. Thank you very much.